We're back again today in greetings and thank you for tuning in. And today we just want to say thank you for showing up. We want to call your attention to something very important. I want to talk to you about dispensational studies today, dispensations of time. Now, if I talk to you about dispensations, some of you probably know what I'm talking about. Some of you may wonder what I'm talking about. Well, in dispensations, what am I talking about? Well, for right now, I'm just going to do an overview. There are different things we can go into to talk about these dispensations, but this is an overview, and traditionally, dispensations are how times are divided by the Christian people, by theologians and the Bible, uh, dis designations of time. Let me use that word, designations. In other words, we're going from the beginning of time right to the very time when Christ comes back the second time and beyond that time. Now to give you a description, I want to use this as a teaching lesson today, so I'm probably going to be reading my notes a lot, and that can be a help to you. So all scripture here, I want to make this clear, all scripture here is from the King James Version of the Bible. And my dear wife is here with me at the controls. I'll try to get her to show herself on camera sometimes. She's a little bit shy about that yet. Maybe she will later sometime. But she's at the controls helping today, and she's a dear good help in the ministry. And as she showed you by our uh, printed screen there, I am Dr. Carl J. Strickland, and my purpose is to exalt Jesus Christ. Yes, I have the title doctor. If I count all my years of uh, education, say starting as a young one in grade school, there were 13 years there, and then I had six years in high school, that's 19 years, and then I spent six years in a Bible school in Tennessee, that's, uh, what, 25 years? And then in Liberty, I spent three years, Liberty University, Lynchburg, Virginia. That's 28 years. And then uh, five years in Andersonville. That's what? That's about uh, 33 years' time of my life. Been in schools of education. So when I say Dr. Carl G. Strickland, it it's not something I bought out of a book somewhere. It was hard earned by the seat of the pants with God helping me to do it. And I earned my Bachelor of Science in Religion at Liberty University, Lynchburg, Virginia. I earned my Master of Theology degree through uh, Andersonville Theological Seminary in uh, Georgia, Camille, Georgia, that's a small town there outside of Albany, and I earned my doctorate degree from there also. When I finished my master's degree and went there for my graduation ceremonies, Dr. Dr. Jimmy Hayes, Excuse me for that pause, man. It's a senior moment there, if you'll forgive me for that. Dr. Jimmy Hayes, who was the president of a seminary, told us all students that when you go through the line, don't leave. Just go back to your seats. I've got six scholarships to give out to uh, six people who have earned them. Well, believe it or not, I was kind of flabbergasted. We don't use it word anymore, but I was really... I was really surprised, I was really happy, 
and my name was the first one on there for receiving a full scholarship to go on studying for my doctorate degree. Well, you might think, well, you didn't take that, did you? Oh, yes, I did take that. When I finished my master's, I thought, well, I've got, I've got enough time. I'm tired. I just want to stop here. But the Lord was working in other ways. And when Dr. Jimmy Hayes called my name and called names of five other people, we were all very happy. And so then following after that, when the next school year started, and I went around the year, I didn't go but like nine months and then stop for three months and go. I just kept going. So when the next classes started for the next school year, I started in my doctorate and finished it. So by now, not bought out of a book on some backstreet magazine, but I worked hard and I've earned my uh, high school diploma with good B averages there in high school. I've earned my master, of my uh, Bachelor of Science from Liberty with a good uh, magna cum laude award for there. And then I went on from there. I couldn't get scholarships to go to Liberty any farther and the prices they had, I really couldn't afford them. So I was thinking what to do. And it so happened that I could go to Andersonville. Prices were affordable and the scholarships were available. And I feel this, my wife and I paid most of the price of tuition in my master's, but we've got some help for scholarships. And through it was uh, one uh, Heroes Military Fund. And then that was in, uh, I'm thinking back in Liberty University when I got those scholarships, they were for helping me through my bachelor's degree, but what I'm leading up to, I could not get any more scholarships. They just didn't have them. So when I went to Andersonville, they had scholarships there. And Phyllis and I paid most of the tuition for that first year in my master's, but they had scholarships that helped to finish out the tuition. And the grades was doing well enough in the magna cum laude range that Dr. Jimmy Hayes awarded me scholarship, full scholarship for my doctorate. So there's my three degrees and where I got them. Bachelor of Science in Religion from Liberty University, uh, Master of Theology from Andersonville Theological Seminary, and then after that, my Doctorate of Theology, Theology at Andersonville Theological Seminary. I wanted to give that, and I hope it is helpful, at least I praise the Lord that I've got them. What I want to do today is use this as a teaching lesson. My dear pastor, my church has asked me if I can do any uh, lessons on the seven dispensations. There are typically, there are traditionally seven dispensations for Bible times and for the churches. And I want to briefly do an overview on the seven dispensations. First one started when God created the earth as we have it in Genesis. Last one's going to start in the future after Christ comes back again. So the dispensation, uh, how we speak of that is unequal groups of time that divide times in the Bible one from the other. The scriptures divide time into Bible times of seven unequal periods of time. 
And these are usually called dispensations, as we find in Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 2. And they're again called days as the day of the Lord uh, in Ephesians 2, 7. These periods are called dispensations. They're called days. They're also called ages. And we have to kind of understand them according to what passage of Scripture they're used in and what they're pointing to and what they're talking about. The time units are meant to be the entire period of time from the creation of Adam to the new heaven and the new earth, as we find in Revelation 21, chapter 21, verse 1. And since this is a teaching lesson, I'll stick close with my notes so I can get it done. I've gone over these carefully for at least a week's time, searching and researching and coming up with what would be good to give you as a time period for each of them and some information about each of them. So one can clearly get the title of Dispensations from Ephesians 3.2, which I gave you, uh, and also from, a, from Ephesians 2.7. But I will read the scriptures to you here to help you here. In Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 2, if you've heard of the dispensation of grace of God which is given to me, to you word, in Ephesians 2, 7, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. And again, the days of the Lord, we find something about it in First Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 2. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. And again, I want to give you this verse also. This has to do with a certain dispensation, which will be the last dispensation. In Revelation 21, verse 1, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea which means there's no more oceans. You don't have to worry about drowning anywhere. You don't need a boat to go from here to Hawaii or somewhere else. You can just take a car and go because there's going to be roads to use and there's not going to be any more oceans there then to be in the way. God starts these units of time in Scripture and each of them by some change in his method of dealing with either some of mankind or all of mankind in respect to the two questions that God holds man responsible for. And those two questions are, are of sin, rebellion against God, and man's responsibility to God. Oh yeah, all people are responsible to God. All people don't belong to God because some people are a child of the devil. We get that in John 8, 44, where the Pharisees were accusing Jesus and different things of blasphemy mainly, and they said blasphemy is a sin unto death, so they picked up stones. They were going to stone him to death. During that conversation, they said God is our father, and Jesus said, no, God is not your father. You are your father the devil in John 8 44 so even though they were not saved they were religious still they were responsible to God each of the dispensation may be regarded as a new trial of loyalty or disloyalty to God by the natural man in other words we are supposed to be loyal to God but a trial to see if people will be or not and each ends in judgment. So far in the dispensations, what we've seen, they end in judgment, which marks the utter failure in every dispensation. Now, uh, let me say that traditionally there are seven dispensations, but really there's eight, and some people just don't count that one for some reason. 
which is really eight divisions or eight dispensations from the time God created Adam and Eve to the time that all the earth we speak of in Revelation is burned up and done away with and God brings everything into his heaven. Eight dispensations of that time. So far, five dispensations have been fulfilled. We're living in the sixth one now. We might just be near to the close of that one. First dispensation, hold this. Now the first dispensation is a dispensation of innocence. Now who's innocent of anything? Well, the question is good, and there was a time of innocence on this earth, believe it or not. After God created, before God created Adam and Eve, when he built the earth, he created the earth, he had all things going the way he wanted them to go, he created Adam and Eve, and they were doing well for a while. We don't know how long it was, there's no time given, say it was a week, it was a year, it was two years, we don't have any time on that. But there was an old serpent there, Satan, who was on the earth uh, with God, and he started uh, trying to destroy God's uh, work on this earth. And he came to Eve, and he started talking to her, and, mixing truth with a lie and he's telling her God had already told them they should not eat of the fruit of the garden of some certain trees and I hear the devil comes on and says are you sure that's right and she said yeah this is what God said so the devil said to her well I know when you do that you're not going to hurt yourselves you're going to make things better He's talking about taking of the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. He said, when you do that, it's not going to hurt you. You're not going to die. You're going to become as gods. Notice, small g, you're going to become as gods, knowing good and evil. Well, sadly enough, he lured her enough she did that. Now, there was a time of innocence up to the time she did that. So that time of innocence started from time God created the earth until Eve rebelled against God and then the time of innocence stopped. And so that ends the first dispensation of time. We don't know how long that was, like I said, but Adam and Eve they created in their innocence and ignorance of whatever was good and evil. They didn't know. They were placed in the Garden of Eden together and put under the responsibility to abstain from the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. They were in de totally dependent upon God for everything and anything they wanted to know, and he didn't want them to know anything except what he wanted them to know. He didn't want them going into unforbidden territory and the things they should not be involved in was what it amounts to. So they needed God to talk to them, to help them, but they didn't pay attention. They let the devil deceive them. So the dispensation of innocence resulted in the failure of man and its far-reaching effects then into our century of 2020, and it was very most disaster and destructive. Excuse me, please. As a result, look at all the effects in our 2020 century today by mankind taking the attitude that I know it all. No one can tell me anything. Don't try. Oh yes, I can go to heaven on my own goodness. I've learned how to live above sin and I can win my place in heaven. This is the very thing that Satan talked to Eve about. He had been kicked out of heaven. His name was Lucifer in heaven. He'd been kicked out of heaven because he tried to rebel against God and get rid of God and 
be God himself. But now on earth here, since he couldn't succeed in heaven, now he's trying to destroy God's earth and destroy everything God built on the earth by causing his people to sin and rebel against God. And well, so far it works. You'll find that that result of what happened there, the knowledge of good and evil has caused people on earth now to just sin against God worse and worse and worse and think they don't need God to get to heaven. They can do it on their own merit. But no, that doesn't work. It's not so. But this all came from Eve's way of letting the devil talk her into take of the substance of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. It, it closed in judgment from God. God drove them out of the garden. I'll give you a scripture verse on that. Genesis 3, 24, so he, that is God, drove out the man and placed at the east of the Garden of Eden cherubims and a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the tree of life. Genesis 126 and Genesis chapter 2, verse 16 and 17, and chapter 3, verses 22 through 24. You might want to keep these, what, pause this video here and get those scripture verses written down. Second dispensation of time was that of conscience. Now remember, they'd already done wrong. Now they were responsible to listen to God to try to get things right again. And yes, God had given them a conscience to know God and to know, to listen and know what he wanted. And by the fall from God's gracious right ways, Adam and Eve acquired and transmitted to all the human people down to us the knowledge of good and evil. This gave conscience a basis for right moral judgment, and by that all humans came under the measure of responsibility to do good and to deliberately avoid and abstain from all evil. They knew what it was now, and I'm sure of course what the scripture says, God had been talking to Adam and Eve and teaching them about conscience and about good and evil. Yes, scripture even says that God did the first sacrifice for human beings at that time when Eve messed up real bad and killed an animal to make clothing for Adam and Eve. And this was the first blood sacrifice for the sins of the people. And even in Genesis 3.15, we have the first mention of God mentioning the Savior of Jesus Christ. And he condemned the serpent the serpent apparently had, had legs like an alligator up to that time, even though we don't have that proof. But he did walk upright, and God said to him, Because of what you've done, you're now going to slither and crawl in on your belly all the rest of the days of your life, eating the dirt that is on the ground. And with that, he told Eve, and he told Adam, and he told the serpent, that the serpent would bruise the heel of Christ, but Christ would bruise the head of the serpent. I wanted to bring that out because that's part of that dispensation. That's a part, of, it also looks forward to the sixth dispensation, the church age dispensation. And what it means is that Satan will cause Christ to be crucified. But Christ will have the dominance over Satan and will cast him into the lake of fire someday for all eternity. That hasn't come yet, but bruising the head of Satan signifies casting him into the lake of fire and hell for all eternity. And then So the 
God caused the dispensation of conscience of the natural man with judgment, a judgment for man messing up when he knew to do better and he refused to do better. We read in another incident that man was evil in the sight of God and all he did was evil before God. And God told Noah to build an ark. Noah wondered what for. There was no water around here to float a boat. Uh, it hasn't even been raining. And for 200 years he believed God and he tried building that boat. And people come around uh, hee-hawing him for doing it. But then one day God told Noah to get in the ark and God had animals to get in the ark. He wanted in the ark. And Noah's family of eight people got them all in the ark. And God closed the door and the rain came down. And you hear some children's songs, the rain came down, the floods came up, and the people drowned because of all their sins. God brought judgment of the flood that we call the Noah's flood or the Noahic flood. It ended the dispensation of conscience. And we went into the number three, the dispensation of government. And I'm going to bring this to close soon. I want to keep these videos short because I've learned that people are not able, not able really very well to handle long videos or a long time in church. They get tired after about 20 minutes and start wanting to uh, do something else. Very often it's true. You, you just bought your body just can take so much and as the older you get the more real reality it becomes to you to understand this so I want to get this dispensation number three dispensation which was called human government now, out of a fearful judgment of the flood that came in Noah's time and Noah and his family were saved by being in the ark and God saved them and God took care of them the, there were eight people there after the waters of the flood were going back into their designated rivers, creeks, and streams, and oceans. And God gave Noah and his family the clean earth with plenty of power to govern it. This, Noah and his descendants were responsible to do correctly, correctly now, not just sloppy do it, but to do correctly in obedience to God. The dispensation, this third one is called human government. It resulted in the disregard for God and the powerful human attempt, a powerful human attempt was made to become independent of people from God and how did they do that? What they went about to build the Tower of Babel and the town of Babel. And so you probably remember that from teaching children or being a child yourself. People went into building the Tower of Babel. They said, we want to stay right here in this area. We don't want to spread out. So this way, they wanted to live right there and stay right there in the plain of Shinar in the town of Babel, which was also the Tower of Babel, which we know more easily than the town of Babel. They built the town themselves, and the name would go for the tower and the town where they lived. They chose to not obey God. In other words, God wanted to spread out and multiply and fill the earth. They wouldn't stay right there in that area. So they chose not to multiply and cover the earth as God had told them to do, they wanted to stay in the one same place of their comfort zone. God did not want that. God did not want that. So, I'm sure that from what we read in the scripture, there were men that time, God's men for the hour, who preached to them, who told them that's not what God wants. And they were to multiply they were to 
and there was men and women to get married, have children. Those children grow up and get married and have more children, multiply and spread out, cover the earth. But they were not doing that. So in the disobedience to that, they tried to stay in one place. Something happened. One day, a man tried to talk to a carpenter over here, tried to talk to a cement person who was pouring cement over here, or whatever kind of stuff they made cement with at that time. Or maybe he's just using brick. Now the bricks, they had mortar and mud and straw they made bricks with. So one who's here over here is trying to talk to us over here. Who he's understanding. And suddenly, what a waiter he tries to talk to him. And this guy over here doesn't understand what's going on. So this guy tries to talk to this man. And this man doesn't understand what's going on. You get the point? What do you think happened? What happened was, God gave this man over here one language. God gave this man another language. It's called a confusion of tongues. They didn't each understand each other anymore. So all probably a thousand or two thousand people working on that huge project. They were trying to build a tower to heaven, they called it, which would probably be probably highest as our highest skyscraper in New York to put some idea of how much uh, big the place was and how tall it might have been. And all those people, God gave them many different languages. We don't know how, but the book of Acts, it tells us about probably 14 different languages that people had. All those different languages. God did that. And the effect was that all the people of the one language gathered together one spot, people in another language gathered together another spot, people in another language gathered another spot. And finally they started separating into groups they could understand and filling the earth like God wanted. But that was judgment that God brought upon them because they all want to stay in one place God says, no, I need you to spread out. I've given you this earth. I need you to spread out and take care of it for me. So God judged them with a confusion of tongues. They could not understand each other. And their tower was stopped. They couldn't build any longer without the help they had. Because they couldn't understand each other. And so it ended in judgment. And with that, I'm ending this video right now. I'm making this a series because I want to go through all of these dispensations and I'm just finishing the third one now. So I'm making this a series, ending with three. And you dear people, follow because my beloved wife will be putting these on Facebook and we going to try to get them on YouTube also and of course there will probably be two more two more videos because this is the third one and I've got eight of them all together so you figure uh, there will be five more so one of them one of the dispensations is a real long one so I might get two on that and get three on one other one. But you'll be paying attention and tune in the next time to our ministry program. God has given me understanding to use the title Moments of Truth from God's Holy Word. And uh, mine have been on that blue paper my dear wife was holding up while ago. Moments of Truth from God's Holy Word. And I'll let her hold that up again as we get ready to go off of the screen. I want to just have a word of prayer as she's holding up below me here. You still see me. So there it is. Dr. Carl G. Strickland, uh, BSR, THM, THD. Moments of Truth from God's Holy Word. 
We have our address there, Lake 509 22nd Street, Dunbar, West Virginia. If you want to write to us, here is our correct address. We're no uh, mannequin, we're no dump, uh, what you call them, uh, we're no imaginary person, we're no robot. We are what we are through the grace of God. My wife and I both dearly serve the Lord and love Him. And so we have this here to show you. Now, I would ask you, uh, go to our Facebook page, find us on Facebook, and then just go to that like button and click the like and let us know you watch us. And if it's been good for you to watch us, you like it. And then uh, you can go to Messenger and give us a private message to let us know what you think about it. We'd like to hear from you like to have some encouragement from you. Now let's close this with a word of prayer and then I'll be stepping aside and my dear wife will be closing out the screen. And thank you, Father, for your help. Thank you for being so good to us. Lord, we hope this has been helpful to people. We need people to understand the responsibility of being true to you, Lord. And that when they don't, there are consequences, there are judgment, there are chastisements. But we need to be true to you, my Father, and help us in this series of studies to bring out the things that will really help people, my Father, and help you to get your word to people the way you want to do. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. See you the next time.